Well, tonight's show is a doubleheader, two stars in one for a 30-minute program. Can't beat that for the prior case. First up is comedian Debbie Gutierrez, who has been all over your TV in recent years, hosting the PBS series A Place of Our Own, Clean House on Style, and most recently, Hidden Agenda on the Game Show Network, you know, GSN. And following Debbie tonight is another multifaceted talent, actor Patrick Muldoon, who is probably best known for his role in Starship Troopers, but today is also making a living as the lead singer and co-songwriter of the band The Sleeping Masses. Bringing them together here is that they will both be celebrity guest hosts at Acme Comedy Theater in Los Angeles on successive nights the first weekend of June. For example, on Friday, June 4th, 2010 at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, Debbie Gutierrez will star in Unscripted Hollywood Dream Roll at Acme. Studio tickets are $8 online, $12 at the door. You can order tickets or watch the show live online for free at acmecomedy.com. And I'll tell you more about Patrick when I bring him on a little later in the show. Now, if you're not familiar with Debbie Gutierrez, here's a sample of her stand-up work. Million six, right? Get in the car, 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 get in the car. Right? You know the children aren't stupid. I know they have them tested. But still. Every morning they have the uniform, the backpack, the lunch pack, and they still have to say, get in the car. Yes, that car, that car, the only car in the garage. Get in the car, get in the car, get in the, get in the car. And you know, you just feel like, you feel like you're not even talking. Like, do you not, am I talking out of my ass? I asked them that one time. I lost my mind. I started to cry. I'm looking at all three of them. I said, is mommy talking out of her ass? And the baby looked at me and said, can you do that? <laughs> Listen how smart men are. Listen, they're... Oh, brilliant. Guys, how many times do you tell children to get in the car? Once. One damn time. And then what do you do? You leave them. You leave them. You drive away. Oh, yeah. Oh, daddy doesn't care if Junior's foot was in the car. My backpack made it in the car. My, oh, daddy doesn't give a rat's ass. Daddy will drive away with one hand. Adjusting the rear view mirror. How's all the other kids look in the rear view mirror? Look at your brother. Look at your brother. Yeah, he's crying. He's crying. Tell me when he gets close. I'm going to slap on the brakes. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Daddies don't feel bad about that. Daddies, don't, Daddies are making memories. Daddies know children are stupid. Daddies... Daddy knows Junior's going to sit right there with him at dinner that night. Daddy, remember when I didn't get in the car? <laughs> and, and I was running. Remember, Daddy? I was running. And the neighbors were yelling at you, stop the car. Stop the car. And then Mommy came out in her robe like this with her pink curler right here going, wait a minute, get in the car. Get back here and pick this. <laughs> Debbie Gutierrez, welcome to Mr. Media. Hello, Mr. Media. Should I call you Hello. Bob? You can call me anything you like, my dear. <laughs> okay. Thank you for Debbie. having me. Pardon? Thank you for having me. Oh, delighted to have you here. Uh, listen, let's jump right in. You've been a stand-up comic for 16 years, and from watching some of your work on YouTube... I know that you're not afraid to work a little blue. Um, do, you, do you gauge an audience early on as to what they can handle, or do you just come out guns blazing no matter what? Um, I come out guns blazing because I'm talking about things that people are talking about in their own homes, and that's what being a comedian is all about, is being able to tap into that place where other people think about it, but they wouldn't say it on stage. And uh, <laughs> When I do, it's a lot of fun. I've been accused of, oh, are you behind my drapes? Do you know what's going on in my house? And, uh, you know, it's, 
is it blue? I don't know. I talk about uh, sex uh, between married couples, husband and wife. You know, I that's where I go. I liked. Uh, I really. There's a clip, and we can't play it here. And that was the point. That's the point of my bringing it up. There's a there's a clip uh, on YouTube. People should check out where you say, uh, you know, issues with the husband. If he's hungry, feed him. If he's if he's horny, you know, do that. And so I had. <laughs> I really liked the clip, and I clicked like on it, and uh, we're such an interconnected uh, social uh, uh, group these days that it immediately flashed up to Facebook, and, and uh, about an hour later, my, my daughter went to check her messages on Facebook and from her friends, and, and there's her dad's message. Uh, I really like this video by Debbie Gutierrez. Um, if, he's, if he's hungry, feed him. If he's horny, and then I thought, you know, got to be more careful about what I like these days. <laughs> Kids need to know. Kids need to know that, you know, <laughs> and mommy have a relationship. And let me tell you, those kids grow up and move out and they're gone. So you better butter your bread where you can. And that's with daddy. <laughs> hey, have, like, you, uh, have you had to temper your act in recent years as you've become, you know, a familiar face on, uh, on broadcast and cable television? Can I hear that one more time? Uh, have you had to temper your act at all as you've gotten better known on television? No, no, no. Like I said, you know, my pastor came to see me one time. I'm like, who the hell told the pastor I was here? And uh, he, he told my husband, pulled my husband aside and said, don't change a word. Tell her, don't change a word. So I went up there and I talked about moms and dads and how smart men are and how important intimacy is in marriage and, and putting your marriage first. And, and uh, my pastor said to my husband later, and to me, he said, she's saying all the same things you hear in marriage counseling and at church, but you're not going to get a guy to go to marriage counseling in church. We'll get him to go to a comedy club. In fact, my uh, nickname is uh, the female comic for men and the women they love. And uh, I'm the female comic that men love to see. That's the longest, That's the longest nickname I've ever heard. <laughs> Sorry. My tagline. Tagline. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Well, Debbie, what what always strikes you as funny, no matter what? Uh, get somebody getting slapped in the back of the head. I don't know why. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, and my husband, who was a former Marine, said you would love haircut haircut day on Marine Corps at the Marine Corps because apparently when the Marines got their haircut, the thing to do is to slap them up the back of the head. <laughs> now, do, do I understand? Speaking of your husband, do I understand that you work with your husband? <laughs> I do. My husband manages me. And, uh, you know, he's great. Sometimes I have to tell him to back off. Like, uh, I was gone 52 out of 91 days. I was booked away from here. Are you trying to tell me something? Um, <laughs> and he, is, he knows my act forward and backward. He knows me inside out. I couldn't ask for a better manager. Just great support. Sometimes it's hard if he's editing me all day. And at the end of the day, we have dinner and I want to talk. He goes, please, please, I've seen you. I've heard you all day. Ah. <laughs> does, does working with your husband, does it put a bigger or a smaller tar target on his forehead when it comes to creating new material? It, it's, um, it's easy. I mean, my family's always been an open book for material, always. The hard part is because he manages his clients. Most managers don't end the day and go to bed with their client. And there I am going, what do you think? Do you think they'll call back? What do you think? Do you think we should set on a date? What do you think we should do? And then first thing in the morning, I'll open up the shower door. What do you think? you think they'll call back? you think that, you know, could you send another letter? What do you think? What do you think? And um, it's fun. Now, um, the, reason, the reason that you're here tonight is to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the uh, unscripted uh, Hollywood dream role at Acme uh, coming up in uh, about two weeks, I think. Uh, two weeks, June no. 4th. Uh, are you nervous? <laughs> I'm so nervous. Can I tell you, Bob, I am so nervous. Um, I am a stand-up and have headlined for 15 years. I'm a talk show host, and I'm really good at it, and I love those two gigs. But improv has always been something that has very much um, impressed me. And it's a little scary for me because this is something new and something I am so impressed with. Hmm. Well, uh, I certainly I'm going to wish you luck with that on, on June 4th. But uh, and we're, we're, I, we ran out of time. This, is, this went by very quickly. What do you want to do? Last question. What do you want to do next? More comedy, more TV hosting? What's in the plan? 
Um, I have some uh, plans I can't talk about because they're all still being negotiated. So everybody keep your fingers crossed for me. I would love to do uh, some speaking on marriage. I think that there's so much to be said on marriage and healthy relationships. And uh, I'm planning on putting a one-woman show on its feet to uh, create a theater piece. And my husband and I are looking at writing a book about marriage. Cool. Cool. Wow. Well, Debbie... um Come back again when we can. We can spend the whole half hour together. Love to talk to you some more. And let me let me remind everybody: you can catch Debbie Gutierrez on Friday, June fourth, two thousand ten, at nine p.m. Pacific time, when she will star in unscripted Hollywood dream role at Acme Comedy Theater in Los Angeles. Studio tickets are eight dollars online, twelve dollars at the door. And you can order tickets or watch the show live online for free. AcmeComedy.com. And Debbie, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. You were delightful. Thank you, Bob. All right. Uh, folks, let's take a quick break here. Uh, this is Bob Andelman, and you are listening to the Mr. Media Radio interview. Uh, coming up next is actor and singer Patrick Muldoon, who sings in the Sleeping Masses, and we'll be right back. Arr! We be under attack. Man the long nines. Prepare to be boarded. Arr! Flagship, starboard bow! What? No, not by the enemy flagship. By garbage! Me beautiful ocean be full of it these days. It flows in from rivers and drain pipes. Many of folk don't know that when they throw trash on the ground, it eventually makes its way into the ocean. How can I enjoy sail me bonny seas with all this trash in it? Why, there's soda pop bottles, plastic bags, even stinky leftover takeout. Fire at will, men! Lend us a hand by always recycling and disposing of your trash properly. If you don't, I'll make you walk me plank. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Seriously, though, learn more what you can do to keep the oceans healthy at keepoceansclean.org. Brought to you by the Keep Oceans Clean Alliance and the Ad Council. Son, we gotta talk about drinking. Uh, I know. I don't want you touching alcohol till you're old enough. Yeah, I, I know, Dad. It's not a big deal. Don't yeah, I know me, okay? And it is a big deal. Underage drinking is just stupid. Yeah, well, why'd you do it? Look, I did it because we didn't know what we know now. Alcohol affects kids differently, okay? When kids drink, it's more dangerous. And you're my kid. And just because they drink doesn't mean you have to. I, I know. I know. Look, son, I'm trying to help. I've seen what it does. I mean, you may think you can handle it, but when you drink, it screws up your judgment. Listen to me. This is real. I, I know, okay? I know. Teenagers know everything, so talk about underage drinking before they know it all, before they're teens. Start talking before they start drinking, and keep talking. To learn more about the dangers of underage drinking and what to say to your kids, go to StopAlcoholAbuse.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Look at all the cars. Lots of colored cars. Ah, there's a blue one. Isn't it pretty? Ooh, look how fast that red one's going. It's red like that stop sign. Like my jacket. This is a 38-year-old man. My jacket's not a car, is it? Is my jacket a car? My jacket is red, but it doesn't go fast. He may sound a little strange to you and me. But to his two-year-old son, who's interested in cars and colors, he makes perfect sense. That's the sound cars make. When you talk with your child, you build vocabulary. And learning starts long before school does. So follow their lead. Take simple, everyday moments, like eating dinner or just watching cars go by, and turn them into learning moments. Ooh, look, red car. Yes, and it's moving awfully fast. Blue car. Yes, the man in the red car is about to meet the man in the blue car. Get himself a pretty pink ticket. Turn everyday moments into learning moments. For more tips, go to bornlearning.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. My name is Jamal Evershears. I have a master's degree. I'm a long-distance runner, and this is how I live United. Education has been so important in my life, but lots of kids in my community don't have the same opportunities. I'm an advocate and fundraiser for my local United Way. One of the things that I do best is help pull people together to promote academic achievement and really give kids a reason to stay in school. I'm part of an ongoing speaker series with experts and young leaders to encourage networking and volunteerism. We also put together events to raise funds and bring our message to the kids that need to hear it most. I know that bringing change to my community won't happen overnight. It's like my marathons. You got to know that the race is long, but eventually we're going to cross that finish line. I believe that. 
And that's what I want for these kids. My name is Jamali Brashears, and I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. What's all the buzz on chataboutit.com on the Tax Trouble Help Show? Well, Mike HB, we have certainly had an interesting list of tax scams. If you didn't tell me you uh, used to work for the IRS, I'd be like, how does he know all these scams? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I had a little too much knowledge about some of these scams, right, HB? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, now this one really works. <laughs> the Tax Trouble Help Show, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. on your computer at chataboutit.com. This is Bob Ambleman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media Radio interview. Uh, joining me now is actor Patrick Muldoon, who you'll certainly recognize from Starship Troopers and other films. But what you may not know about Patrick is that he's adjusted his priorities in recent years, putting much of, it, putting much of his energy into the band The Sleeping Masses, for whom he is the lead singer and songwriter with Neil Ives. He's having some real success, too, as you can see in this music video for the song The Woman is the Way. The song appears in Powder Blue, a movie starring actress Jessica Biel. Check it out. Patrick uh, Muldoon will be the celebrity guest host of Acme Saturday Night at the Acme Comedy Theater in Los Angeles on Saturday, June 5th. Studio tickets are $10 online, $15 at the door. And you can order tickets or watch the show live online for free at acmecomedy.com. Patrick, welcome back to Mr. Media. Bob, how are you? I'm good. Good to talk to you again. Good to talk to you. Now, Patrick, I have to be honest. The last time we spoke... I thought the band was just a little side action for you, but it really seems to be taking off. Yeah, yeah. Since the last time we spoke, um, well, I think we had been to England. The video hadn't uh, really been put together yet. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the action that the band has received has been over there. So, uh, so we're on the tube and on the radio in the U.K., which is right proper. You know, I mean, Bob... Is that a bad English oh. accent? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. I won't even off. try mine. <laughs> uh? <laughs> now, uh, tell folks why you decided to give music so much of your energy these days. You know, uh, music is uh, what I've always done. Uh, you know, if I was on the set or whatever, I mean, ever since I was a teenager, I wrote songs. So I think essentially what happened was you know, in between the acting gigs, um, the opportunity kind of arose just to write for movies. Um, you know, even if I was in, you know, one of my little uh, uh, sci-fi movies or whatever I'm doing, I'm like, hey, do you guys have a theme song? And it, and, and it just kind of started from there. My partner and I, Neil, um, started writing songs for um for movies and TV shows, and so, you know, Powder Blue happened, and we got the end title song, and it's kind of snowballed, snowballed from there. I mean, we probably placed, we were on the hills recently, um, you know the hills, right, Bob? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so this, you know, it just kind of went from there, and so now we're kind of writing for other artists and, and for TV shows, 
and my mother's dog is banging on the window to get to get in the room. <laughs> the Hills, that's that show with the blonde who uh, had, had one too many, well, actually about ten too many uh, plastic surgeries, right? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one, Bob. <laughs> We didn't write, speaking we didn't of write a, speaking of famous uh, women that, in Hollywood, I understand you're working on a new film with Twilight star uh, K- uh, K- Kristen Stewart, who does not need plastic surgery by any means. No, she doesn't need pra- plastic surgery at all. Yeah, that's uh, that's called K11, and that's um, you know it's it's a story that takes place in the LA County Jail in a in a portion of the prison that um, um, you know people that can't go in the general population go into K11. So that's celebrities and transvestites, Bob. So, uh, so, so Patrick, this is not a sequel to the Jim Belushi movie K9. You know what? Maybe it is actually. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Now, are you acting in this movie, or are you doing music for this movie? I'm um, playing a rocker. A uh, I'm playing a you know a rock musician who happens to be famous and happens to be in that portion of the jail. Ah, so doing a little of both. Doing a little bit of both, yeah. Uh, what? When will we see this? Uh, is this shooting? Uh, what's the? Well, this, it's look. This is an independent movie, and it was <laughs> we were supposed to be shooting a couple of months ago, so we should be shooting any time now. So okay. it, it kind of depends on Kristen's schedule. All right. Well, now I, I interviewed uh, actress Melissa Leo recently, and she had also worked with Kristen and had nothing but warm words for her. I'm guessing you must feel the same. Yeah, I mean, I haven't worked with her yet. I've met her a couple of times. Um, I had the pleasure of working with her mother, Jules, who's who's uh, a real uh, real sweetheart, you know, a wonderful woman. She's actually directing the movie, so um, you know, they seem like a great great tight knit family. Hmm. Now, uh, you're here to talk about uh, Acme Saturday Night, and you're returning uh, June fifth. I uh, think it'll be easier and more fun the second time around. You know what? It's going to be a lot easier. No, I, I shouldn't say that because that's always the curse. It's not going to be easy at all, but uh, the first time, I, you, you know, when you're going into the unknown, it was, that was, it was scary. But it, it I, so I know that it's scary. I embrace that it's scary. I know that I'm going to have a couple of days to memorize everything and then fly out on stage, but I have, uh, I have a feeling it'll look, it'd be a little bit more fun. <laughs> time, you know? And, and last, uh, we last question, because we're going to run out of time here. Uh, will there be another Sleeping Masses album soon? There's going to be a Sleeping Masses. Uh, we're going to record it this summer. It'll be out by September. Terrific. Well, uh, folks, uh, I know this was an abbreviated uh, conversation, but uh, Patrick uh, Muldoon will be the celebrity guest host of Acme Saturday Night at the Acme Comedy Theater in Los Angeles on Saturday, June 5th. Studio tickets, again, are $10 online, $15 at the door, and you can order tickets or watch the show live online for free at acmecomedy.com. And, by the way, you can order the Sleeping Masses CDs at mrmedia.com. And, Patrick, what's the website for the Sleeping Masses? The sleepingmasses.com. Brilliant. Patrick, thanks so much for joining us on Mr. Media again today. Good to talk to you. Bob, thank you so much. And, and if you guys come down to the Acme Theater, uh, first round of drinks on me afterwards. Okay, you heard it, folks. <laughs> Patrick's <laughs> buying. <laughs> hey, take care. Talk to us again soon. Thank you, Bob. All right. Bye-bye. And, folks, for more original interviews with your favorite actors and comedians, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's mrmedia.com. And you can now hear Mr. Media while you're on the go with Stitcher Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile application. The latest episode of Mr. Media is always available for you there. No syncing needed and no memory wasted. It's available for your iPhone, your Palm Pre, Android phones, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy, so go to Stitcher.com or check out the App Store for your individual mobile phone. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. And if you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Always appreciate when you spend a little time with Mr. Media. Come back and hear us. See us real soon. Bye, everybody.